staying in the 60s for a moment, the last time uh, we were talking here in, in studio, uh, we were talking about uh, the civil rights movement and the AIM uh, movement in the 60s and the solidarity. Mm. And uh, one name that came up was Muhammad Ali. Oh, yes. Uh, what a sweetheart. What, what went through your mind when you learned that he, uh, he died? Oh, just the sweetest thoughts for his family and the sweetest thoughts for him. I mean, he was just just extraordinary. I got some stories about him, but they take too long to tell. But, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, we were talking about folk music and Bob Dylan and all, and the scene in those days, and none of those people came out for American Indian people or Aboriginal people in Canada when I was doing that, you know, for the first time in the 60s. Nobody. Bob Dylan, Judy Cohen, um, Joan Baez, uh, none of those people showed up. They were all at the photo ops around civil rights. They were all heavily protected protected by managers who, you know, were directing them to get in front of the cameras and to express their hearts in that, in that area, in that arena. And I'm very glad that that happened. However, what they didn't do was show up for anything that we were doing in the American Indian movement. You know who showed up? Dick Gregory, Stevie Wonder, Richie Havens, Muhammad Ali. Um, uh, I mean, we had, we did have some African American support in those days, uh, and uh, it, it was a good kind of support. They got, those those guys got it, I think, because they were um, they were experienced in oppression, how it's done, and what you can do about it. Do you have a Do you have a lasting memory of him? Uh, maybe <laughs> in the in, in the I don't know, a lasting memory of him. I oh I I too you know he came to see me one time when I was in Washington D.C. in this little club called the Cellar Door, <laughs> and it wasn't very big you know of course he 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 snuck in at the last minute but you know the audience you know realized that he was there I mean, he's a so hard guy huge. to miss yeah oh gosh yeah but he was way up in back and then after the show um, he walked me back to my hotel and we walked around D.C. for a while you know and it was fun just to be with him and the next day. Um, he, he he at the end of that evening he said um come to breakfast with us tomorrow and i said who he said i want you to meet kid gavilan so um you know i knew the name of course but i, I wasn't a, a big sports fan and you know i knew him because he was who he was and be, you know just because of his heart and his mind and his his brilliance um and so we had breakfast uh, um at a little place in dc and i remember riding around afterwards just with mohammed in a, on another occasion and um the, uh, he, he was rapping and rhyming in the back seat. You were in the back seat of uh, his his uh, his limo, and uh, I just remember looking at his hands. They were so huge. His hands were the size of somebody else's big big head with a lot of hair. <laughs> I mean, just these huge huge hands. <laughs> and when we got out of the car, the, we weren't at a destination. I can't. We were in Georgetown someplace. He got out of the car, and there wasn't a big crowd. Until about 30 seconds later. I don't know how people knew that he was there, but people just, all of a sudden there was a big crowd around him. I mean, he was so recognizable and mm. so well-loved. Thanks for asking about that's, him. That's beautiful. Well, thanks for sharing that yeah. story. That's great.